In this lecture, we want to explore how you might go about modeling more organic shapes or curved shapes. Now, these type of structures are quite difficult to generate the geometry for analytically. Uh, and that's where something like Blender or another modeling package comes into its own, because it will have modeling tools, which we're going to demonstrate in this lecture, that will allow you to create these kind of organic uh, structures very, very easily. So what you're looking at here basically is a truss. So it started out life as a typical space frame Toberon truss. It was then twisted, so we created a 360 degree twist from one side of the truss to the other, and then we raised the center of the truss up into uh, to give it a slight arch. So again, this is a concept type structure, um, and that's where these kind of modeling tools really come into their own. When you're doing any kind of concept uh, modeling, exploring different kind of structural forms and form finding. So we're going to model this structure, and then subsequently, uh, we're going to go on and analyze the structure. But just for this video, we're going to demonstrate how we can really very easily generate the geometry uh, for a structure like this. So we will just, uh, just again, just to give you a bit of a sense of how we arrived at this particular structure. It started out life, if I come over to my scene hierarchy here, we'll hide that. It started out life as a, a very simple truss, Toberon truss. We then applied the twist from one end to the other, which gave us this, and then we raised the center up into an arch. So it's actually, you know, the modeling of this thing is actually very straightforward, uh, which you wouldn't think when you actually look at the finished structure. All we really need to achieve in this lecture for the purposes of structural modeling is this kind of model, a wireframe model like this, because this fully captures our geometry. So we're not going to go to uh, go do the extra step of creating a, a visual like this. This is really just for demonstration. So you can see if I tab into this, you can see, you know, we've got a a larger number of nodes here and a mesh created around each of the elements just to give it a, a bit of visual appeal so that you have something a bit more a bit nicer to look at uh, for the purposes of this video but we don't really need to do that for uh, for structural modeling uh, which is what we're focused on in this course so as i said we're going to finish up we're going to finish up with something like this that we can export uh, out of blender and into our jupyter notebook for further analysis okay so let's get on and start modeling this thing Okay, here we are in a fresh Blender scene. So the first thing that I want to do is delete everything from the scene. So this is the usual uh, the usual course of action for me is just to, at the start, just select everything by hitting A and then hitting X to delete. Okay, now you'll notice our 3D cursor is in the center of the scene. So that's, that's handy. So all I'm gonna do now is hit Shift A, Mesh and Plane. And that's gonna add a plane at the location of the 3D cursor. So adding in a plane is probably one of the easiest ways that I can get a single vertex. You can can't do shift A and then add a vertex. What you can add is a, is a mesh and then just delete everything in that mesh that you don't need until you have one vertex. And that's what I tend to do. So I've added in my plane. I'm gonna tab into edit mode now. And then I'm gonna hit the mesh menu on the top left. And then I'm gonna come down and go merge at center. And what that's done is for that plane object, it's merged the four vertices that make up that plane at the center. So now what I'm gonna do is extrude that vertex in the X direction by one meter. So I'm gonna hit E, X and one, and that's extruded it. And that has now given me an edge. So if I tab out of edit mode, we can see that edge that's being created. So I'm gonna go back into edit mode now and I'm gonna extrude that vertex again, but this time in the Y direction. So I'm gonna hit E, Y and one. Okay, and then I'm gonna select the first vertex and hit E, Y and one again. And then I'm just gonna fill in those two vertices or fill in an edge between those two vertices by selecting the two of them. So shift uh, or click and then shift click and then hitting F to fill. So now I have essentially a box. So now what I want to do is generate a vertex that's in the middle or a vertice in the middle of that box, but raised up 0.866 meters. So what I'm going to do is, you'll see why now in two seconds, I'm gonna take this vertex here, I'm going to shift D to duplicate it. So I'm not extruding it now because I don't want an edge connected between the new vertice and this one. I'm just gonna shift D, that's gonna duplicate it. Okay, I'm going to then hit X to move it along the X direction and then hit 0.5 and enter. And then I'm gonna hit G, and then Y to move it in the Y direction, again, 0.5. And then I'm gonna hit G for grab again, Z to constrain my movement along the Z axis and hit 0.866. So that is the apex of my, tri my triangle for my truss. So I'm just gonna connect this down to the four corners now. So I've got it selected. I'm gonna shift select that and hit F. 
then click on the vertex that's at the apex of the triangle and then shift select. So I'm basically connecting it to the four corners of the base square here. Okay, and that's the, the, the basic triangle that's gonna form essentially our truss. Now, the one other thing that I want to do is I want to triangulate the base of this truss because the, the, the sort of swirling truss that we're gonna build is gonna to wanna to be fully triangulated. So I'm going to just cross brace out the base of that triangle like so. Okay, so that essentially makes up the basic element of our tab out of, uh, out of edit mode. That makes up the basic element of our truss. So now what I wanna do is I'm gonna tab back into edit mode. I'm gonna select everything and I'm gonna hit Shift D and I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm gonna duplicate it along the X direction, everything. So I'm gonna hit Shift D, X and then one. Okay, and then I'm going to connect the top two vertices by clicking them and hitting F. Okay, so this is basically what we're gonna do. We're basically going to repeat that process until we have a truss that is 20 meters in length. Now, the, before I do that, the one thing that you have to be very careful of when you're doing any kind of modeling um, in Blender, uh, especially structural modeling, where you're gonna actually use the, the, the vertice and the edge data, you've gotta make sure you remove double vertices. And what I mean by that is, if I click this guy down here, you'll notice that if I grab it, you'll see that there's a, there's, there are essentially two vertices occupying the same position here. Okay, and that's no good because that's going to be exported into our Jupyter Notebook and it's it's going to confuse issues completely. So I'm going to escape out of that. Is an easy way of dealing with that. If you select all of your vertices by hitting A and then go into the Mesh menu here, then go to Clean Up at the bottom and then Merge by Distance and then watch down the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. You'll see how many vertices that, that have been removed. So basically watch, I think down here it's going to say how many double vertices have been removed. So again, I'm gonna go Mesh, Clean Up and Merge by Distance. And here we go, look, two vertices have been removed and that would have been a vertex there and a vertex there. So now you'll see if I click that vertex and hit G to grab, you'll see that there is no left behind uh, vertex. There's only one vertex. And that's what we we're trying to achieve. So now what I want to do is I'm going to tab, uh, no, I'm going to stay in edit mode. I'm going to hit two to go into edge select mode. And then I'm going to select this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, him, 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 and him him so basically the entire right triangle except for the adjoining edge here okay and then I'm also going to select this top edge and then I'm going to duplicate that so I'm going to hit shift D X and one now instead of doing that every single time what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit shift or and that's going to repeat my last command whatever my last command was that will repeat it so if I hit shift or you'll see I've got another copy and I can hit shift or again again all the way until my truss extends out to 20 meters. And I can see by the grid squares that my truss is now 20 meters in length. Okay, excellent. So remember, you're gonna have a lot of duplicate vertices in here. So let's select everything by hitting A and then going mesh, clean up and merge by distance. And you can see there were 54 duplicate vertices removed. Okay, so this essentially is our bare bones truss. Okay, so now we can start thinking about how we wanna create the, the, the swirling arched truss um, that we're shooting for here. And we're gonna make use of one very, very helpful tool for this kind of modeling, and it's called proportional editing. It's very difficult, well, I certainly find it difficult to explain proportional editing, but you'll, as soon as I show it to you, you'll understand it straight away. But before I do that, before I do that, what I want to do is I'm gonna try and do my modeling in a non-destructive way. So I'm gonna basically, instead of, instead of editing this model here, I'm gonna create a copy and I'm gonna edit the copy. So anything, anytime I do something with my modeling where I'm making a very significant change that would be hard to reverse, I essentially create a copy. So you'll see up in the top right-hand corner here, we've got this plane. That plane there is our model. You can see if I hit the little eye icon here, it disappears, we've turned it off or turned its visibility off and we can bring it back again. So I'm gonna double click on that and I'm gonna rename it Truss underscore basic, okay, so that's our, our basic truss we know we can come back to. I'm then gonna duplicate this truss by hitting Shift D, okay, and then right clicking, okay, so that right clicking just essentially duplicates it in place. So if I was to hit G again, you'd see that we have two of them now. So you can see our copied truss up here, so I'm gonna name that truss underscore twist. 
truss underscore twist. Excellent. And I'm going to hide the original truss. So now I'm working on truss underscore twist. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to create this swirling or this twisting of this truss. Now you'll see now that to try and do that any other way than using a tool like proportional editing would be exceptionally difficult, but it's going to be actually very easy for us. So what we're going to do is up here is our proportional editing menu or our, our proportional editing toggle. If I click that button, okay, now proportional editing is turned on and I can change again, the, this is what's called the proportional editing fall off. And uh, you'll see what I mean by fall off now when I start demonstrating proportional editing. But for now, I'm just going to set this to linear. I'm gonna go into front view mode. I'm gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna select one, or vertex select and then I'm going to select the three vertices on the end here. What I want to do is rotate those three vertices around the X axis. So I hit or X and you can see that rotates those three vertices right now that rotation action is not having any effect on any unselected vertices. Now the magic of proportional editing means we can essentially have a, a, a diminishing, an influence on the other vertices that are not selected and our, our influence on each of those vertices diminishes with distance. So again, kind of difficult to understand until you've seen it. So let me turn on proportional editing now. I'm gonna go into side view and I'm gonna hit again, remember, or X. And now watch what happens when I use my scroll wheel. See, we get this circle. When I use my scroll wheel, I can make that circle bigger or smaller. And you can see as I start to rotate the end, the zone of influence of that rotation operation is being governed by the circle. So the bigger I make that circle, the more my twisting or rotating on the end here is affecting the rest of the truss. So what I'm going to do is type 360 and that's going to rotate 360 so a full twist of the three vertices selected and then I'm just going to expand the scroll wheel until the zone of influence comes all the way up to the end of the truss but I don't want it to go too far so essentially I don't want to modify the position of the last two vertices on the left hand side right where the 3D cursor is there so I'm going to stop the expansion of the circle because you can see if I go any further I start to change the positioning of the final two vertices which essentially are going to be the supports uh, for our truss. So I don't want to go that far. So I'm going to come back one and you can see that we leave those in their original position. And then I'm just going to click to execute that operation. And now you can see we have our, we have our truss, our twisted truss. So that would be without some nice modeling tools and um, that would be exceptionally difficult to do. I mean, you could come up with some very, very interesting maths to try and generate uh, mathematically these coordinates. But when you've got access to some really powerful editing tools, it becomes really, really easy to do something like that. So the other thing just to point out here is we use what's called a linear fall off. OK, and so the degree to which we were influencing all of these different vertices back here was reducing linearly with distance from this point down here on the right hand side. So that was that suited for that twist operation. We're going to use a different fall off type uh, for our next operation. So I'm going to tab out of edit mode. In fact, I'll select shift A to unselect those vertices and then tab out of edit mode. So we can see our truss here in object mode. It's quite nice. So now again, before I do my next modeling step, I'm going to take that twisted truss and I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate it, right click, and then I'm going to rename this truss twist underscore twist underscore arch because now we're going to add in a little bit of an arch into that truss okay and i'm going to hide truss twist so again you can see what i'm doing here at any point i can go back to the previous version of the truss if i need to you know and you'll find this is certainly if you're doing any kind of concept modeling or any kind of form finding you'll find that you end up going back steps one or two steps every now and then because you know you might go down a bit of a blind alley with your modeling so let's bring back uh, truss twist arch now i want to put a bit of an arch into this thing so i'm going to tab into edit mode i'm going to go into side view and i'm going to select the very center of the truss in fact before i do that before i do that I'm going to invert this truss and in fact I'll, I'll show you why I'm going to invert it now because what I'm trying to achieve here if I if I just change my fall off in fact I'll leave it as linear for the time being what I'm trying to achieve here is something like this right so I'm going to select those vertices again that's hitting B for box select and then clicking and dragging is selecting those vertices in the middle of the truss and what I'm trying to do here is I want to get a nice sort of gentle arch into this truss so you can see if I do that now uh, so if I hit G Z now I need to reduce the size of my circle here because I'm having too much of an effect. Now you'll see what linear fall off actually 
is it's a very linear, well, it's a linear fall off, right? So that's what we mean by linear fall off. Now, if I change that, if I escape out of that operation and change my fall off to uh, sharp, okay, you'll see what these, what you know, you'll see what these are, what they mean. So let's hit GZ again, and you can see you get a different shape. So the shape here. Uh, in the fall off is is basically what you're seeing here in these images. So what I'm going to go for now is an inverse square fall off. Now, if I was to hit G Z 1.5, you can see it's close to what we want, but I we happen to have a bit of a dip in the center of the truss here, right? So we happen to have a bit of a dip, uh, which means we get an awkward kind of a dip at the apex of our arch. And if I do that again, G Z 1.5, you can see the arch is coming up nicely, but then you get this awkward sort of dip back down again, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is invert the truss. So I'm going to escape out of that operation. I'm going to tab out of edit mode. I'm going to turn off proportional editing and with the truss selected, I'm going to type or to rotate X about the X axis and 180 to do a 180 degree rotation. Now I'm going to go back into side view by typing one and you can see that we have our truss has a natural, you know, it has a natural um, arching shape here and that sort of awkward dip is on the underside, which is which is fine for visually what we're trying to achieve. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode here and then hit G, Z, I'm gonna move it up 1.5. And now we're just gonna feather the size of this circle uh, so that we leave the support nodes in the same position so you can see if i go too far i'll start to i'll start to shift the whole um the whole structure but i want those two supports on the right and two support nodes on the left to remain in the same location so i'm going to come back in and that's about as far as i'm going to go with that so i'm going to hit enter or click and that executes that operation okay so that's basically it. That's what we were trying to achieve. So we have a, a, essentially a Toberon truss that has been twisted and then pulled up into an arch. Um, and you know, this is obviously a bit of a contrived example. This isn't based on any particular structure, but it's a good example of, you know, leveraging the power, the modeling power of something like Blender, and um, you know, to create this kind of structure and to create the geometry here, because without modeling tools and to try and do this, um, you know, analytically, for example, would be, well, it would be a nightmare, uh, but it's much, much easier for us in Blender. So one last thing I wanna do here just before we finish out this video is just remember to turn on in our viewport overlays, if I actually type into edit mode first, then go into viewport overlays, remember to turn on indices. That allows us again to identify vertex numbers, which is gonna be very handy for us, uh, relating vertices in our model here with degrees of freedom in our Jupyter notebook uh, when the time comes. So again, that's in viewport overlays and indices. And if you come into viewport overlays and you don't have indices in here, that's okay. That just means you have to go over to edit, preferences, over to interface here and then click this developer extras to make sure these developer extras are turned on. So if that's clicked, you should be able to close that down and again go into viewport overlays and you should see this indices here. Okay, so we will leave that there for now and in the next video we'll come back and have a think about how we can get the data that defines this model out of Blender and over into our Jupyter Notebook.